Hi traders, welcome to a new Sierra chart guide here on the price action volume trader channel. So today we're going to be talking about the chart data and what the settings I use are to make sure that Sierra runs as smoothly as possible and also takes up the least amount of hard drive space in my computer. So as you know, Sierra chart, you know, is not like TradingView where it is TradingView is a cloud based platform with Sierra chart. All the chart data that you're using is locally stored in your system, in your computer hard drive. And so if we go into the main charts, we're going to be talking about what settings I use and what I would recommend you have just to make the loading a lot faster and smoother on your system, okay? Before we dive right in, as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. There's already over 35 videos on the Sierra Chart Guides playlist, and I'm gonna link it down in the pinned comment below as well. So there's two main data uh, chart data types that Sierra Chart has, the historical and the intraday. If you're looking at any chart on the daily or higher, for example, this is a daily chart on the ES futures contract. We are now in the September 2024. If I go into chart, chart settings, and then on the second tab here that says data limiting, if you go over here, see where it says load data limiting method days to load, you can see that where it says days to load for intraday data, it's sort of blurred out because that doesn't apply to any chart that's on the daily or over. But below that we have days to low for historical chart data type, 2000 days. So that means that on this chart, let me get out of this. If I scroll all the way back to the left, you can see back over here, the first candle that I have here is all the way back from March of 2019. So I have 2000 daily candles loaded in here because that is what I have the system set to. If I didn't need to go that far back, I could just go into chart settings and I can change this to a thousand or whatever you want. But historical data uses very little memory. So with historical data, you'll notice when you load up a Sierra chart, uh, chart book, the higher time frame charts always load very fast because the historical data doesn't really take that much space. When you go in into a, an, an intraday chart, that's where you're going to be using intraday data and it's going to be a lot more size on this contracts. And you'll notice when you open this charts, especially, you know, depending on how many days back you're going, is going to take a little while to load up. Not a lot, but it's going to take, you know, a few minutes. If I go into the chart settings, for example, on this hourly chart, now you can see that now is the inverse of the daily. Now where it says days to low historical chart, it's blurred out and days to load intraday chart type is active and I have it set to 100 days. So that means that I have 100 days loaded on this hourly chart over here. Now, if there's, you know, some significant action that I want to make sure I've included over here, then I can just load up more days. If I want to do that, let's say, let's go back to the daily and we can see that this, there's a slight overlap all the way back into like June 6. So, if I go into the one hour chart,
you can see that this one okay yeah it's right around that date you can see here june 5th so yeah that's why i loaded this amount of days because this is pretty much the most that i need for confluence but if i needed more or less i can just change it on the chart settings so depending like i said how much you need of confluence like for example if this market was down here then i would definitely want to load these days as well so that means on the hourly chart i would need to load enough days to go back all the way until like february for example at the moment since we're near all-time highs just taking it from this area is enough for me on the hourly chart now on the intraday charts like lower time frames like the five minute or the tick charts that i use for day trading this ones i usually have 30 days i don't really think i ever need to go back more than 30 days on a low time frame chart you know maybe i'll go back to the beginning of the week or last week to check something but i'm not really going to need to go back 30 days so on market profiles for example i have mine set to 120 days because if i want to really zoom out you can see i have market profiles going back 120 days here all the way back here into may for example this is the split session profile so i have extended hours and regular hours and i have the same just for the whole daily profiles i have 120 days loaded here on the chart if you change the number on here then the chart is simply just gonna reload let's say that i want to put just 100 days here i click apply all and the chart is going to start reloading again until it hits that now remember with futures the contracts go in three month periods we got march june september december contracts on like nasdaq and the uh, sp500 and so depending how far back you're going on the intraday charts you're gonna need to load all the past contracts as well so for example here i'm on the september 2024 contract um or sorry i'm on the december contract already then i need to load the september contract i need to load the june contract i need to load the march contract etc so if i bring up here this is from the file explorer on my computer under data folder in sierra chart if i toggle by size you can see that there's all these files that have an scid extension okay these files are all the chart data that you're going to be loading and you can see how most of these files all of them are in the gigabytes especially like the older ones from like 2023 they're all like over two gigabytes in size the more recent ones from like 2024 you can see that they're a little bit smaller just because this is contracts the present contract is still not expired so it hasn't loaded all the data yet but the older um you can see that the contracts do take up a significant amount of this space these files you can delete them if you want i mean you're not going to want to delete them now but i'm saying if you for example want to transfer the whole installation to another computer you do not need to copy these files because simply when you open sierra chart it's just going to start downloading all this data again whatever it needs in order to display display the charts for the specific number of days that you have it set at okay but if you accidentally delete 
any of this SCID files. Don't worry, Sierra Chart is just gonna re-download it again, so it might take a little bit more time than normal to load, but it's going to download the whole data again. I used to have other markets here, like I used to, when I made the market profile course, I had charts open for Bitcoin, Euro, US dollar, gold. So all that data was stored in here, but I just took out all those files because those are markets that I know normally actively trade. So I didn't need them taking up all that space in my computer. Okay. And if your charts are ever a little messed up too, or they're not loading properly, you can go to edit and there's a button that says delete all data and download. If you click that, it's just gonna show you the contracts that are necessary in this chart to reload and you just click OK and you're gonna see there's a window saying downloading continuous contract data and it's basically just re-downloaded all the days of data that you have set for this specific chart and then you're just gonna be all set and it's just gonna display everything again as you need okay so that's pretty much it for the video so this is how you control the amount of data that is being loaded on your chart so again if you're using lower time frame charts you don't really need that much days to load is going to help you your system be faster and your charts load up a lot faster as well okay so with that take care and i'll see you in the next video